Hello everybody, Ms. Lenzmeyer here. Today we're going to do a read aloud with the book Hana Hashimoto, Sixth Violin. When Hana Hashimoto announced that she had signed up for the talent show and that she would be playing the violin, her brothers nearly fell out of a tree. That's just loopy, said Kenji. You're still a beginner. Stop kidding, said Koji. You can barely play a note. It's a talent show, Hana. Could be a disaster. Hana squared her shoulders and took her violin and bow inside, leaving her brothers laughing like monkeys in the tree. She pulled at the strings, letting them twang. It was true that she was still a beginner. She had only been to three lessons. The first time Hana held a real violin had been that summer while visiting her grandfather in Japan. Long, long ago, her grandfather had been part of a great symphony orchestra in Kyoto. Oji-chan had been second violin and once played in front of the imperial family. Oji-chan played every morning. From his study, the clear, bright notes would drift upstairs through the shoji screen doors where Hana slept on sweet-smelling tatami mats and coax her awake as gently as sunshine. Oji-chan usually played classical pieces by Mozart or Mendelssohn or Bach. But in the indigo evenings, while Hana and her brothers ate ice cream and oranges, Oji-chan would sit on the veranda and play requests. Hana always asked for a song about a crow cawing for her seven chicks. Whenever Oji-chan played it, Hana would feel a shiver of happy sadness ripple through her. Oji-chan didn't just play songs. He could also make his violin chirp like the crickets Hana tried to find in the tall grasses. He could pluck the strings to mimic the sound of raindrops on the oil paper umbrella Hana twirled under during summer storms. And when the first fireflies emerged at twilight, Oji-chan could compose a melody that seemed to make them dance higher and glow brighter than ever before. At the end of each day, as Hana lay with her head resting on a cool buckwheat pillow, Oji-chan would play a lullaby so soothing that sleep would fall over her like a blanket. On their last day together, Hana told Oji-chan she wanted to learn to play the violin. And when Hana got home, her parents agreed that she could. Now, Hana was practicing not just for lessons, but for the talent show, too. Hana practiced every day, just like Oji-chan, and every day her brothers fled the house with covered ears, complaining about the horrible noise. She practiced in front of her parents, who listened with care while they washed and dried the dishes. She practiced in front of her dog, Jojo, who cocked his head and sometimes growled at the strange sounds Hana made. And she practiced on her own, in front of an old photo of Oji-chan from his symphony days. Alone, Hana could pretend she was performing in front of an audience so appreciative, they called for encore after encore. The day of the talent show arrived and the school auditorium thrummed with excitement. Backstage, Hana waited with a walloping heart. A dozen acts, including five other violinists, had already gone before her. Finally, Hana heard the master of ceremonies call her name. As Hana walked onto the stage, her violin tucked under her arm and bow gripped tight in her hand, an oceanic roar filled her ears. Things seemed to be moving in slow motion, and for one dizzy moment, Hana thought, Kenji and Koji were right. This is going to be a disaster. She wished she could turn into a grain of rice and disappear into a crack beneath the floorboards. She could hardly see with the spotlight in her eyes, yet, as Han looked out into the audience, certain faces appeared to her as if through a telescopic lens. She could see her brothers melting into their seats. She saw her best friend, Joss, giving her two thumbs up, and there, her smiling mother and her father, camera in hand. Hannah held a breath then ballooned her cheeks before letting it out. 
With a whoosh, the roaring in her ears receded. Then, as everyone seemed to disappear beyond the light shining down on her like a moonbeam, she remembered. Gamba Runoyo Hanachan. Do your best, her grandfather had told her. Ojichan would be cheering for her. Hana swallowed her nerves like medicine and leaned toward the microphone. She would just do her best. This is the sound of a mother crow calling her chicks, she said. She placed the violin under her chin, held her bow in position, and played three raw squawky notes. Go, go, go! This is the sound of my neighbor's cat at night. She dragged the bow across the strings, and the violin yowled in loud protest. This is the sound of rain on a paper umbrella. Hana plucked the strings for a soothing plop, plop, plop. As Hana continued to play all the special sounds she had practiced, the air around her came alive with buzzing bees, zzzz, and lowing cows, oh, and squeaking mice, squeak, 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 and croaking frogs, ribbit, ribbit. Finally, as the last sound effect trailed away, Hana tucked her bow and violin under her arm. And that, she said to the audience, is how I play the violin. Then she took a great big bow. Later, after dinner, Kenji surprised Hana by asking for an encore. Make that funny cow sound again, he said. Then Koji said, make that crazy cat sound too. So Hana did. And when her mother and father and brothers all laughed, she happily played her sounds again. Perhaps next year, Hana would be able to perform one of Oji-chan's favorite pieces. But for now, Hana played a little melody and she had been practicing remembered from nights lit by dancing fireflies. She imagined that the notes would drift out through the window, past the bright rabbit moon and beyond, and Ojichan would hear them and smile.